Hi, this is Tom. Welcome to my channel. I'm continuing a series of videos on narcissism. And I'm going to start out by reading a description of narcissists. Narcissists, those with narcissistic personality disorder, have core beliefs which include viewing themselves as special or unique, mistreated and misunderstood by others, uh, more entitled than others, and never at fault or blame for anything. Because the world is constantly bombarding them with evidence to the contrary, they are subject to high levels of stress due to cognitive dissonance. Now, not only are they subject to very high levels of stress, but they cause very high levels of stress uh, due to cognitive dissonance. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. And be before I start, I want to mention this is my name, Tom Ewell. And if you put this in Google, if you put my name in Quora in Google, it will take you to this link here, so this is my name, Tom Ewall, E-W-A-L-L, E-W-E-L-L, is an actor, so this is E-W-A-L-L, Quora, it'll pull up this link, and then if you go to this link, it'll take you to Quora, and if you like what you're hearing in this video, then I've written many, many articles. You can take this most recent and change that to all time views. And you can see I have almost 7,500 followers. And uh, these are almost all uh, due to narcissism um, about uh, answers uh, dealing with questions about narcissism. This is me, knows a lot, unfortunately, about narcissism. And these will pull out the cell time views, the answers that had the most engagement. So ones that people, uh, you know, thought were interesting. Okay, so back to my video. And so I'm discussing why narcissists are so difficult to understand, part one. This is part one because there are many reasons why narcissists are so difficult to understand. But here I'm wanting to discuss uh, one. And to start off, I'll give uh, an analogy, which I thought was brilliant. And I wish I could remember where I heard this to find it. But here's the analogy. So say you're a prisoner of war and um, your enemy is torturing you or slapping you in the face and they're saying, you know, you, uh, you're crap, um, you know, you're, you're garbage. And, uh, you know, and they're slapping you in the face. All right, that's scenario one. Okay, scenario two is, let's say, another captor is slapping you in the face. Perhaps they're like an attractive woman, if you're a man, okay, slaps you in the face and then says, I love you. You know, slaps you in the face and says, I'm doing this for your own good. Slaps you in the face and says, I care about you. So the first scenario would not produce cognitive dissonance like the second one would. Because in the first one, it's easy to understand what's happening. You've been captured by an enemy. Uh, you know, they don't like you. And you're at war on them, and they're treating you really badly. So it's painful, but it's pain that you can understand. In the second scenario, there's pain that's hard to understand. You know, there's gaslighting involved. It's a, 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 a brainwashing technique. It's uh, messing with your mind. So... That's an analogy of what happens with narcissists. Is narcissists will do cruel things, very, very cruel things, uh, you know, very unkind things. But they, they won't give off a vibe that they're upset at you at all. And that causes a lot of cognitive dissonance. Now, sometimes they'll you know, be cruel, unkind, because they're angry at you. That's not the cognitive dissonance scenario. The cognitive dissonance scenario is when they do something cruel or unkind and there's no vibe that they're angry at you. 
And it's difficult to understand because you, in their situation, would be unable to do what they did unless you were angry at the person that was on the receiving end of the behavior. So how do we understand this? How do we explain this? Well, there's uh, a couple of parts to this. So the first part is I want to go back to the description that I read at the very beginning, which is that narcissists have core beliefs, which include viewing themselves as special, unique, and mistreated and misunderstood by others. So this part here is really important, that they feel that they're mistreated and misunderstood by others, that they have a, a victim mentality. And what causes that is the exaggerated sense of entitlement. So the exaggerated sense of entitlement creates a vast gulf in the narcissist's mind between what they have and what they think they deserve. So from the narcissist's perspective, life is unfair, and they are trying to right the scales of justice. They're trying to get the perceived mismatch between their situation, their actual situation, and, and what their situation should be. So their actual situation is not that of a person who is entitled like they are. It's not that of a person who's special and unique. There's this mismatch. They want to fix that. So it's a very, very high priority to the narcissist. And they'll think of it in terms of uh, getting their needs met. They think that their needs aren't being met. Uh, so, it's, so it's in a way, the way that they think about it is a way that is very um, understandable, I would say. It's very reasonable on its face. Like if the premise were true, you know, if they uh, really were being unfairly treated and misunderstood and they're trying to get things right, well, that's something that anybody would do. So it's, it's um, okay, so that's the starting position. And now let's get to the part about, you know, why they do the uncruel and unkind things. And the reason for that is very simple. And that is if your core beliefs are that the most important thing in life is that you get your own way, uh, that you do what you want to do, that you satisfy your own needs, um, it's inevitable that you will do unkind and cruel things to other people. That just is a complete, it's impossible for that not to happen. That is a totally natural consequence. That's the way that being self-centered works. Um, so that's why they do cruel and unkind things. So again, I'm not talking about the scenario where these are intentionally cruel and unkind things because they're angry. I'm talking about the unintentional ones. And that just flows from this kind of mindset. Okay, so now the second part is, how is it that they don't understand that they're being cruel and unkind? <clears throat> and a reason for that is that uh, they don't care. And so they, they, when, as a normal uh, mental health adult, an adult with normal mental health, you care about what the impact is on your actions and words on other people. And you don't want to needlessly hurt them. So you might hurt them if you're angry at them, but if you're not angry at a person, it's, you're, you're gonna be, the normal thing to do is be careful in the way that you treat other people, and the things that you do and the things that you say so, to, so that you don't hurt them. Okay, now the narcissist will, if, will, and their default mode is they don't care. They're not focused on you. They don't care about what happens to you. They're not thinking about you. Uh, now, sometimes if um, they perceive that getting you to act in a certain way will impact them, then they will care. But if they're not perceiving that there's any impact on them, they don't care. And a way that you can tell whether the thing that they're doing is actually unintentional. Well, first of all, your intuition on this is very likely to be correct. Because if a person is doing something to you 
that's unkind and cruel, and they're doing it on purpose, they'll give off vibes that that's happening. They'll sense that. Um, on the other hand, if they're not giving any vibes about that, that's where the cognitive dissonance comes in. Because there's this disconnect. They're being unkind to you. They're being cruel to you. But they're not giving off any vibes that they're upsetting. So um, that's, uh, again, where the cognitive dissonance comes in. Oh, I was going to say, another way that you can tell that it's unintentional is if you can confront them with it. So if you confront them with it, if you say, you know, you did this thing, I didn't like this, I thought it was unkind, then the narcissist will respond very likely one of two ways. So one way is they'll defend what they did. And so they'll, they'll show that they're aware of what they did and they'll defend why it was justified. So they're not going to, like one of the things is, you know, that they're never at fault or blame for anything. So they're not going to recognize that what they did was wrong uh, and accept blame for it. But they'll justify it and they'll explain why they did the thing that they did. Why you did something to them and, and that merits the response that they gave you. Right. That's intention. Now, if it's unintentional, then they'll respond by acting clueless and, and actually being clueless. Like they'll respond and they won't understand what you're saying. Um, they, they won't understand that they did anything that was unkind or uncool. They just won't get it. And that's, um, that's, that's uh, you know, they'll deny, they'll deny they did anything unkind or cruel and they won't understand that what they did was unkind or cruel. And that's how you can tell that it's unintentional. And the, um, you know, screwing of the mind occurs, of your mind, because of this cognitive dissonance. And the cognitive dissonance is this juxtaposition of cruelty and unkindness with obliviousness of not having done anything wrong uh, and, a, and also a vibe of, you know, that they're, they're not angry at you. And what, what makes it um, difficult to understand is because you wouldn't do that in their shoes. They're acting differently than you, that you wouldn't be unkind or cruel the way that they were unless there was a reason for it, like you're upset at the person, you know, angry at the person. And that's because you have an awareness of how your actions and words impact other people. That's, that's the default setting. You're always aware of that. You don't have to think about it to be aware of it. But that's not the default setting of the narcissist. The default setting of the narcissist is they're oblivious to what their actions are. And they have another setting, which is where they can be manipulative. And then when they're in that setting, then they're trying to get a certain response. But a lot of times they're just being naturally unkind and cruel because that's what a self-centered mindset, a mindset of, I want what I want when I want it. Uh, I, it's important that I get what I want, what I need, that mindset will inevitably lead to cruelty and unkindness. So I'm going to bring the video to an end here. And um, I hope you found that uh, helpful in trying to, I guess I will, actually I'll say a little bit more. And that is my motivation for sharing these, these ideas about trying to understand narcissists is that I think in order to find closure, it's really, really helpful to understand why narcissists are the way they are, what they're doing, why, the why of it. Because if we have an accurate perception of what's going on, I think that really helps us in uh, our healing process. Well, thanks for watching and until